So this is the practice for the conceptual part. In part one it's saying that we have a data table of copper two chloride in water and the amount of volume that the copper two chloride over here contributes is negligible. So we're just going to assume whatever volume we find for this is the actual volume of the solution. So given all of that information we should be able to do the problems including the density of water. So first it says show work for the volume of solution. So we have the mass of the solvent and remember we said that the solvent is the only thing that's contributing to the solution. So whatever the volume of solvent that is the volume of solution in this case because the copper 2 chloride isn't adding anything to the liters. So showing work for the volume. If we have 200 grams of solvent water what it's asking is how many liters do we have and we have a conversion factor right here for water. This conversion factor can be written out in its own for every statement. So for every 990 grams of water there are one liter of it. We don't have 990 grams however we have 200 grams and we're dividing by 4.5 and if we were to do the same for the one liter we would find that we have 0 0.22 liters of solution. And as you can see in the trials, so here's trial one, or solution one, solution two, solution three, the amount of solvent stays the same. So this number is just carrying over. For the next part, it asks for showing the work for moles of solute. And as you can see up here, these are the grams of solute. And our solute in this case is copper 2 chloride and the equation for that is CuCl2 and the molecular weight of that is 134.45 grams for one mole. So for the first trial or solution we have 50 grams of that so we need to figure out how many moles there are. So using that for every statement for every 134.45 grams of CuCl2 there are one mole of it. We don't have 134.45 grams we have 50. We're dividing by 2.7 and if we were to do the same there what we end up getting is 0 0.37 moles of CuCl2 when we have 50 grams of it. So that's the first solution and this is all 0 0.22 so the first solution for 50 grams is 0 0.37 moles and you guys can figure out the rest in this solution we're using 100 grams and in this solution we're using 150 grams. So you can figure that out. And for the next part it asks for molarity. In order to do that we need to know the moles and the liters. And we found that in the previous two questions. So for solution one the number of moles was 0 0.37 and the amount of solution was 0 0.22 liters. And we know that from the previous two problems. So we're trying to figure out the molarity. So let's put this into a for every statement. For every 0 0.37 moles, there are 0 0.22 liters. But molarity is a particular number of moles per one liter. In order to do that, we have to multiply by 4.5. and we should get 1.68 moles 
per one liter, which is, in this case, because it's per one liter, the molarity is 1.68. I wanted to give you guys the entire answers for that first table. In this next part, they're asking for plotting a graph of the grams of solute to the molarity of solution. Now the grams of solute we already have and it's under this particular this column 50, 100, and 150 and the molarity of solution we found that from that one. So in the graph itself we should observe a relationship between the number of grams and molarity. And in this case the grams of solute is what we're changing so it would be the X and we're observing what the change is on the molarity and you guys can plot and answer the next set of questions on that for part two it's the same basic idea you're filling out a data table and that is the fill, filled out data itself The only thing different in the graph we have for part two, we're plotting the liters of solution to the molarity. So we want to see when we change the amount of liters of solution like we did, what is the effect on the molarity of the solution.